Hey guys, we're back here for another day in the arena. Um, couple minor changes here to the deck. Um, yeah, very happy hitting Mythic the other day and now trying to push for the top 250. If you are new here to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing, maybe sharing it with a friend, dropping a comment or a like. It really does help the channel. I, and I greatly appreciate you guys. And for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for your support. It really does mean the world to me. So having a look at the deck, a um, couple minor changes, still running 21 lands, a little bit of a lower land count. I decided to add in uh, one copy of Squee, one copy of Godric, and then shave down to one copy of Feldon. Um, I also made room here just by cutting uh, two copies of Engage Invasion of Ragatha. I do still like the effect, and I think, you know, the damage to face is great. It's also good at knocking down the Invasion of Tarkir. And then in addition, I made room for one copy of Shivan Devastator. Just because we do have the four Invasion of Tarkir, I feel like this could um, give a little bit of extra damage, possibly be like an end game threat. And then with that change for kind of a little bit more, a um, couple more creatures here in the deck, we're now up to 16 creatures, and technically it's 20 with Kumano faces Kakazan. So with that change, I did nudge the Monstrous Rage up to three copies. I think that this, this many creatures can support three. And then shaved one copy of Play With Fire to make room for that. So still kind of testing out Frantic Scapegoat. It does feel really good, and I think that, you know with access to creatures like Squee on three and Godric on three, um, Scapegoat giving those menace could be really, really big game. So the other consideration is now that we do have a couple more creatures, you know, maybe it is um, starting to make more sense to run Phoenix Chick. So I'm just kind of feeling it out. Um, would love to know your comments and what you guys think. Um, I still love the four copies of End the Festivities. This is still our best answer against Boros Convoke. It's great against Mono White as well, and it does have some utility in like the Blue White Control matchup um, if they have their Sunset tokens out. Um, additionally, being able to um, knock down the final point on Wandering Emperor after Wandering Emperor activation can be really helpful as well. So all that said, let's go ahead and jump into some games. If you do really like my content and you want to you know, leave a tip, thank me. Um, there is a way to do it. So if you go to the little more icon, um, you can actually donate via super thanks. So if you want to leave a tip, um, I greatly appreciate it. You don't have to, but if you want to show your support and your thanks, there's another way to do that. And you can do that right in the, um, through YouTube here. So, all right, let's get into some games. I do think Mono Red is still really well positioned right now, especially since it does have pretty good game against Blue White Control and also against Boros Convoke, especially with End the Festivities. So I like where it's at right now. There are some definitely tougher matchups, but I think overall, since those are two such common decks that you run into on ladder, I do like where it's at right now. Um, yeah, this hand is either going to be great or kind of not that amazing. But I think with three land, I definitely am going to keep it here. Also, since we only have three three drops in the entire deck, being able to you know keep hands that have like two copies of Sokens in is just fine. And I think overall having access to more threats out of our lands does make having the full play set worth it. Okay, so we are up against Convoke, most likely. Okay, and if they do go for the um, Scry right here, definitely think that I'm going to use the Lightning Strike to get rid of the Warden. Kind of slow them down a little bit. Just because I think this can become such a big problem. Uh, 
All right, so now we can go double festivities if we want to, um, which is kind of nice, especially if they have something like a Knight Aaron in hand. We're not pushing a ton of damage right here, so um, another play, we could just take another four next turn if we're not afraid of uh, Knight Errant. And I think that there's a possibility that they would have played it if they had it. So we could go like Kumano faces Kakazan plus Codebreaker this turn and then set up for like double festivities next turn. And I think that that's good because they're still at 20. We want to get some damage on the, on the table. Start working on their life total a little bit. Um, yeah, definitely with this deck, it does feel like you have to be super reactive a little bit just because they can go off so quickly otherwise. So this is a little tough. Um, I definitely want to get rid of Warden, but I think it's also worth dealing with these other threats here. So we're at 10. We could also consider running, running the Devastator out there and waiting for a turn, but I, I think that this just gets bigger and just gets out of hand. So instead, maybe we Lightning Strike the Warden, um, and then end the festivities, and then, yeah, double end the festivities. So I think that's probably the play. We're cashing in a lot of our uh, removal right now, but I think it definitely warrants it with how big their board is. Now if they draw like land or like whiff. Okay, they've got the Epicure. This is definitely gonna be close, but Godric is a really nice draw here. We can threaten lethal right here. They'll force, force blocks. Then they only have two on the swing back. They could draw into some more gas, but I think we've just kind of got to go for it. Now, if they don't kill us, we can swing over for the win with Devastator. So they would need, like, Imidane's off the top here. Yeah, and that's not going to do it. And that'll do it. Okay, another potentially great hand or <laughs> mediocre hand, but again with three land, I'm just going to keep it here. And this is where it's really nice to have these Sokens in, just in case we don't draw into creatures. Um, gives us something to do with our land. So I think I'm just going to hang on to the play with fire against mono red. It's, it's pretty useful instead of just throwing it at face. This way we've got a reaction here in case they want to try to like burn out our swift spear. I doubt they're going to try for it, but I think it's good to have access to. 
And we're holding it here because if we were to play it, they would just burn it in response. Okay, so they do have the play with fire, so we'll force them to use at least a second play with fire here. <clears throat> That's a nice tap deck. Okay, that was great. We're able to whiff their removal. Feels super good. Um, I think we want to have access to Lightning Strike here, so I'm okay with playing the second Soken Zone. We could just push damage right here. I mean, we'd be pushing seven. But again, I think we want to be a little careful. We can kind of slow roll it a little bit. Save our lightning strike. And obviously they saw us use the Sokens in to leave up two mana, so they know something's up. They can probably intuit that we have the lightning strike. Here I think we're happy to just... Um, well, actually, with Feldon, I don't really want to end the festivities here. It's not a great... Because that gives them two cards. So I think we just let them swing in and just start racing. And then I think we're going to hold the Lightning Strike to our turn, just so we can get the extra activations off Swift Spear for the extra damage. Uh, since we drew Scoundrel, though, I'm happy to get Scoundrel going. And I think I... Probably we'll just make Scoundrel a 2-2, just so that it can potentially trade. I think we're happy to let them sort of do their thing here, since we're a little bit ahead on life and just try to save our burn for like the last turn. So if they try to hold back Swift Spear here, we'll have Lightning Strike ready. Okay, and that was actually, that was good because I was prepared that they would have like Monstrous Rage. Thankfully they didn't, so now we can wipe their whole board within the festivities. We will give them two cards, which is the only, again, problem here, but we're pushing five damage, so we're getting them kind of close, so I think I like it. Yeah, again, I'm, I'm not in love with the two cards you're going to get off Feldon here, but I think if we drop him to six. I guess we could, like, try to wait one more turn. Hold up Lightning Strike. Ugh, this is tough. Yeah, I think we just go for it. It's not ideal, but... We've got enough to bring Squee back here, but I think hopefully we can just burn them out. And if we can force him to kill Scoundrel, then we've got lethal already. That 
should do it. But yeah, I've just been really enjoying this deck. It's it's super fast. It feels like a really clean build. Um, <clears throat> it plays great against control. And if you're in a best of three space, you know, hopefully the the board can help you out with some of those like bigger creature uh, creature matchups, where you can bring in like the witch doctor frenzy and things like that. Um, yeah, happy to keep this. We've got access to at least one red mana. Kumano faces Kakazan on one. And even if we don't have another creature here, I'm happy to just run this out. It's just such a great card on one. Okay, this is fine. Happy to get Invasion going here. Okay, up against Esper. Oh, this is great. So now since we've got two end the festivities, no matter what they take, we can just get rid of their their bat. And I guess this is Esper mid-range, so it probably runs like Virtue of Loyalty, Rafine, and all that nonsense. The big key takeaway here <clears throat> that I've definitely run into before is you definitely want to kill their bat ASAP because otherwise they drop the Rafine and get the life gain going and just don't want to allow any of that nonsense. And Invasion is pretty good against them if we can flip it. So here if they play Rafine, we can just like um, use Rage to get through it. But yeah, disrupting their turn two bat is clutch and they know that as well so they're ready to just give it up all right well nice clean 3-0 uh, let's take a look at the overall stats for the deck i really like how this deck has been playing um, again i hope you guys are enjoying it too uh, let's take a look all right so it is currently 74 percent win rate uh, 23 wins and eight losses um, on the play, it is 81% chance to win and 67% chance to win on the draw. So, so far, really liking the matchups. Mono Red, it's uh, currently uh, seven wins, two losses. Uh, Boros Convoke is looking great as well. Six wins, one loss. Only had a couple matches here against Blue White Control, but it is currently two and one. And then two and oh against Mono White, two and oh against Mono Black. 50-50 against Amir, and then <clears throat> uh, I guess Esper is showing his 0-2, although I think we just played Esper, but maybe it didn't count it for whatever reason. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know. Maybe it considered it a different deck or something. But at any rate, it's doing well here against Golgari, uh, Gruul, and I think one loss here against Rakdos. So really enjoying it so far. Hope you guys like it, and you guys are awesome again. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next time.